Uh, so if you're wondering why I am here, who, if you're thinking about who is BSF, uh, if the first thing that comes to your mind is cassette tapes, you're probably that, that generation. I'm not going to age you. I was at the tail end of cassette tapes. Um, but that's probably what we're, what we're the first thing that comes to mind. We're a multinational organization. Um, usually we're, we say we're in the things that make the things you love better. So, you know, we're the paint on your GM truck. We're the rubber in your Adidas shoes. And me specifically for agriculture, we support our farmers who are growing the food that's on your table. So we help support them in achieving their goals. And so why am I sharing? You know, we're still a service organization. We're here to help service our farmers. Um, they have one of the biggest jobs on earth. And so we want to make sure their job is as easy as possible to do. And so that's what my talk about is today. You know, agriculture is a, is a very turbulent uh, industry. I'm sure a lot of you are used to that. And so, you know, we deal with a lot of times where we're dealing with the predictably unpredictable moments. So when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, you know, hard time, there's going to be a time where something goes wrong. You need to deal with a really tough conversation with your customer. You just don't know what it's going to be about, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. And so what I want to focus today on is how do we at BSF kind of manage that? We're a very process-driven organization. We're German. So everything is process or safety. And so part of our goal at BSF is how do we change a very process-driven organization into a very customer-centric organization? And doing that, just getting ahead of your customer needs. And so what I want to talk about is a very specific moment for us. For us, it's the warranty experience. It's a very hard discussion and a hard journey for our customers. That's usually when something goes wrong. It's usually it's a product or a service that's happening. Um, and how our team members handle that when something goes wrong and how to have some of those difficult conversations. And so for us in the warranty experience, you know, we, we've known for many years, it's a shitty experience. We have amazing people, we have amazing products, but we don't know how to handle shit when things go wrong. Sorry, I'm saying a bad word, but uh, we're, we can, we, we're a little salty in egg. Um, and so for us, we wanted to understand, okay, what is really driving this? We've redone this process three times. Why is this not getting better for us? And so we dug into some of the financial and uh, sentiment uh, metrics, because metrics drives our business. And we were really seeing that, you know, for the customers who were going through a claim, so, you know, something didn't work on a farm, they're coming to you either for money, for additional services, for different products to replace what didn't work. Um, those customers were having a really bad NPS. They did not like working with us. Um, the financial impact, this is the one that drove the decision to really invest in creating this and redoing this experience for our, our leadership team. It was having a 10% sales impact on our business. So customers who went through a claim process with us, so on average year over year drop of 10%, that equates to 50 to $100 million every year. That's huge. Um, it also drove a uh, churn with our employees. So when we think about customer experience in our organization, we want to think about, is it going to improve the employee experience? Is it going to improve the customer experience? And is it going to have financial impact? And so this really hit all three. And then obviously we care about our customers think, but we also kind of care about what the industry thinks and how we stack up against our biggest competitors. Uh, we were ranked as, I don't know how to go back, but we were ranked as the worst in the industry. And so we're a premium brand. We need to have a premium experience for our customers or else we're going to be equated to some of the generics in the market. We were worse than some of the generics in the market in some cases, which was not a good, not a good thing for us. And so because we're a process-driven organization, we said, hey, we've redone this three times. Why don't we try something new? Let's think about what does it look like if we think about what is the customers going through? So we said, we want to approach this outside in. We want to start with our customers, really understand what the customer is going through. Because we tend to say we're going to start with the process and then backfill it back to the customer or create a new tool that's going to create a better experience. And so we said, let's actually start with the customer. We did customer feedback. Um, whether it was through survey feedback, through one-on-one -on -one panels, interviewing our, our sales team. We use that to design what is the experience our customers are actually going through, like taking our egos outside of, the, outside of it, design what that journey looks like for our customers, and then identify what are actually truly the pain points that our customers are going through as they're going through this journey. And so from there, we said, Okay, what do we want this experience to be? We have identified the pain points um, and we're gonna redesign what this experience really should be for our customer group. 
And so this is where process and tools and everything comes in. It's at the tail end of redesigning your experience. It's not at the beginning of designing your experience. And then finally, what are we gonna measure? So we talked a little bit earlier about KPIs. What are the KPIs that we care about? They're gonna help indicate us so we know when things maybe are going off the rails for this experience. And so for us, we really wanted to create a process that we could use consistently across the board. For us, consistency is a big thing. And this is not something that's natural in our organization. So we wanted to make something that was simple that any team in our organization could use as a starting point to then redesign a lot of this. And this doesn't always have to be specific journeys. We've actually used this for segmentation. So really understanding what certain segments in our customers want. What do the big farms care about the most versus our little farms? What does that experience look like for them? So we've used this process to scale that up across our organization. And so what does that look like if we're thinking about the steps? So for us, we have, uh, um, this is the actual journey. So um, our customers, we sat down with our customers. We did a survey about a hundred different farmers across, this is based in Canada. Um, we talked about uh, really understand what were the root issues. And I will tell you that, take, kick your assumptions out the window. You know, most of us would have said, they just want more money, right? I will tell you 99 out of the 100, no one talked about money. It was all about timeliness. It was all about transparency on communication. It was about employee enablement. So how do we hand over across our different employees so they feel like they're getting the same experience at the same time? And so our team, I would say our biggest detractors became our biggest promoters because they were actually able to say, oh my God, these are some of the things that we can easily fix across the journey. This isn't gonna take a huge investment for us. This is gonna help us really enable and identify some quick wins. And so we use this as our starting point for the journey um, and worked with a, a strong steering team. So we, this process for, from end to end, I think one of the reasons why we tend to not, we start with process and not journey is because it touches so many different people in our organization. 50 people were involved in this experience across our organization. It's really hard to get 50 people. But we had a steering committee who was really, really committed to this and really passionate about making this, making this come to life and make, doing a really good job. And that included marketing, included sales, including finance, legal, our operations team. So bring that community together who's going to really help drive and bring this to life. It also creates champions. As soon as we did this and people actually saw the, the improvements and they got really excited and they wanted to scale this up and think about what are the other ways that they can do and bring this into the organization. So what does that look like? So we said, okay, if this is the current journey, what does the future journey look like? And so we worked as a team. We, we went through a workshop specifically about this moment in time. And we said, where are the areas in that journey we really need to fix? And so the team worked through and designed, we need to move these arrows. You can kind of see where the old one was and how we wanted to move it up. And it became very simple. So something simple as, you know, when we, when we have a claim, we move money from a bank account to a bank account to pay out a customer. All, we, know this, we know this issue is going to come up. Why are we doing this process every single time? So all we had to do was say, we're going to have our money sit in this area. We're still following all of our auditing issues, our legality problems. But we can cut our payment pride from 21 days to three days because we already have dollars sitting in account because we know it's going to happen. So all we need to do is one transfer instead of three transfers for a customer a customer and that didn't cost us anymore it actually reduced the amount of times we had to do paperwork and so the team actually went through and redesigned and part of this was even just thinking about how do we train our employees more or train our employees better one of the biggest drivers for this was around employee churn so this negative experience was actually driving uh, our employees to leave because they didn't really want to have those really tough conversations some of them were students right out of school they didn't know how to have a discussion with a farmer about a million dollar impact to their farm. And so we actually did one-on-one -on -one training and soft skill development. It wasn't about just implementing a new policy, but it was about how do we build up our sales team, create a better, more consistent experience and empower them and make them feel possible to have these conversations. <coughs> and finally, just better communication. How do you use your existing tools better? How do you use your portals better to provide better transparency? And as we were going through this process, we actually had um, the customers who we interviewed want to be part of the ideation. So as we ideated on ways to improve, we brought those customers back in because they were also really excited about the improvements. They recognized the fact that, yeah, it's hard to do deal it's hard to do business with you, 
but we recognize that you're improving. And so let us help contribute to ideating on some of the solutions. And then they were bought into it and they felt part of it. We actually had customers who wanted to just understand and see how things were going along. So it was great to see them co-create with us. And then finally, um, we wanted to make sure we can measure this. And so when you think about measurement and KPIs, what are the, it's not just about sentiment KPIs, but also how do you connect financial, operational, and employee KPIs tied to it? And so these aren't the actual stats, but um, you know, what are the KPIs that are gonna really move the needle? For us, it's churn and acquisition. We, there's only so many farmers in, uh, in North America. They're not growing, and if anything, we're losing. So if we lose sales, that means it's going to a competitor. We're not, we're not acquiring anymore. So we have to make sure we're protecting that share wallet for us. And so how, what are the key KPIs that you're gonna focus on that are gonna help you understand if this journey or this experience is creating better or, or more negative experience? So how do you move from a reactive approach to a more proactive approach? So you're getting ahead of those challenges. So that is, that is my thing. And I just wanna say that it's, it's a journey. Pick one thing that you truly feel like you can have an impact on right away and use that process to scale up or down how you need.